your favorite beach? Is it Isle of Palms, Folly Beach? The next time you go to your favorite beach, because here in Charleston we have the most wonderful beaches, but when you're at the beach next time, take a look around, because chances are you're going to see a piece of plastic lying in the sand next to you. And odds are that piece of plastic is going to be a straw, because plastic straws are some of the most commonly found items during beach cleanups. Americans use 500 million straws every single day. That's enough to fill up this auditorium 10 times over every single day. In my work in ocean conservation, I travel to beaches all around the world and I sure see my fair share of plastic straws. But increasingly, I'm seeing beaches that look like this one in Mumbai, where children are laughing and running and playing across beaches that are strewn with plastic trash and jumping into waters that are filled with all kinds of plastic waste. This is the new reality for this little boy and millions of children around the world because globally we are dumping a garbage truck a minute of plastic into our ocean. A garbage truck a minute. And it accumulates from generation to generation so that generations of children yet to come will never experience a clean beach either. When plastic enters into the ocean, it fragments so easily because of wave action, photo degradation, and animals eating it. This photo was taken on what is considered to be the most polluted beach in the United States, which is ironically located on the big island of Hawaii. The plastic you see in this photo most likely did not come from the local population, but instead it has washed in from distant shores because when plastic enters the ocean, it gets swept up in these vast circular currents called gyres that sweep from continent to continent so that a plastic straw that slips off the shore of Charleston can theoretically make its way to the beaches of Europe before circulating back again to the eastern seaboard. Plastic pollution knows no borders. This image that you see here is a demonstration of the accumulation of plastic pollution on the ocean surface. So it's a distribution map. There are more than five trillion pieces of plastic floating on the ocean surface that does not account for what's deep in the water column or is already sunk to the bottom of the sea. There are no islands of plastic out there to drive a boat up and scoop it all in and away we go. Instead, what we are seeing is a phenomenon called a plastic smog. Because much like carbon exits smokestacks to pollute our atmosphere, plastic, a carbon, is shooting out of our watersheds to pollute our ocean. 600 marine species are impacted by plastic pollution through ingestion, and entanglement. This includes all seven species of sea turtles. This little fish here had 17 pieces of plastic in its stomach, and it's only a few months old. A recent article in the UK said that fish eat plastic like teenagers eat junk food. And that would be really funny if it wasn't so horrifyingly true. But it gets even worse, because plastic attracts persistent organic pollutants. These are really bad chemicals, like pesticides and fire retardants. So when a fish eats a piece of plastic, a toxic stew is hitching a ride right into our food chain. But what about us? Are we eating plastic? Well, I don't like to eat fish guts, and I'm thinking you might not like to eat fish guts either. But what about fish we eat whole, like anchovies, or shrimp, or shellfish? Researchers in Europe are saying that a dinner plate of mussels can have up to 90 pieces of plastic in it. So yes, we are eating plastic. So where is all this plastic coming from? Well, it's coming from you and me and billions of people all around the world because the chief culprit here is plastic packaging. These are items that we use so briefly in time, yet because they're made of petrochemicals, they will persist in the environment for hundreds and hundreds of years. So think of things like chip bags, candy bar wrappers, styrofoam containers, plastic cups, shopping bags, plastic beverage containers. Americans use 
two million plastic water bottles every single hour. That's 50 million single-use plastic water bottles every single day. So how have we come to this point where we're eating our own plastic pollution and practically burying ourselves in plastic waste? Well, to give an example about the rise of plastics, a hundred years ago, beverage manufacturers relied upon glass bottles to package their products in. These would be used by customers and then sent back to the factory and reused again and again, an example of a circular economy. But in the 1960s, beverage manufacturers discovered plastic, and they created the one-way bottle. And this is because plastic is so inexpensive to use when it's new, it's just cheaper to create new bottles out of new plastic, and manufacturers stopped caring about plastic bottles after they left store shelves. Profits soared, but somebody was left to pay the price. And the answer is, we did. Because now, not only are we buying their products that are in plastic packaging that's contributing to this environmental catastrophe, but as taxpayers, we are now paying for the disposal of their plastic packaging through our waste management at private and municipal systems. This phenomenon of the one-way system is not limited to the beverage industry alone. It's scaled across sectors and is truly global. The next time you go into your supermarket, take a look around. The majority of products you see on that store shelf are packaged in plastic made from petrochemicals. So now amplify this experience by billions of people around the world who are going into their local supermarket and buying products very similar to what you're buying, made out of plastic packaging that's very similar to what you see on your store shelves. But the difference is, in a huge percentage of the world, there's no garbage truck coming down the street. So what are they doing with all their plastic waste that they generate every single day? Well, it ends up along sides of the road or in makeshift landfills like this, or garbage dumps, really. This photo was taken in the Caribbean. And what happens in these situations is after a rain event, like the last hurricane, all of this plastic is going to wash into the watershed and out into the ocean. And this is the crux of the problem. The situation sounds really hopeless, but it is not. And that is because scientists around the world are working on amazing, innovative new materials to replace petrochemical in plastic packaging. So recently, the US government scientists have created a new material that can preserve food, but it's made from milk. And it's demonstrating to be degradable in certain liquid environments, which is really exciting news for me and it should be wonderful news for you. But we need corporations to invest in these innovations and scale them globally. How do you fit into this equation? Like it or not, as consumers, we are the demand for all of this plastic packaging. We need to change our behavior and change our expectations of these companies. Let's activate our powerful consumer voice and demand better packaging because the solutions are out there. We need to reverse this global health crisis of plastic pollution. Today, I ask of you three things. One, I challenge you to never use a plastic straw again. Two, the next time you go to buy a beverage, Choose the product that does not come in plastic. And three, at the end of the day, as you look around at all the plastic packaging that you have discarded, pick up a piece, like a chip bag or a candy bar wrapper, put it in an envelope, and send it back to the product manufacturer with a note to the CEO demanding that they do better. Generations of children yet to come deserve better. Send it back so we all globally, collectively can get back clean beaches and a healthy ocean. Thank you.